Glory be to God. I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I am Brother Hosanna David. Welcome to the Narrowest Christ for All Nations. Today, I want to speak on the topic, Enthrone God over your life. Enthrone God over your life. Let us pray. Oh God, our King, we thank you, we worship you. Thank you for your love and your greatness. We ask, O oh Lord God, that you speak to us. Help us to trust you in a time of doubt, in a time of danger, in a time we need to make critical decisions. Help us to always love you and obey you as a proof of the love we have for you. Spirit of the Lord, we ask that you speak to me and also speak to your children. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to this channel, The Narrow is Christ for All Nations, and also visit our website, tnwcfen.org. So today's topic is Enthrone God Over Your Life. Our test is John chapter 21, 15 to 19. John 21, 15 to 19. So, when they had dined, Jesus said unto, said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. And he said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. And he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto, unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Now, this is a verse I actually want us to concentrate on. Verse 18, Verily, verily I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou gathered thyself and walked and walkedest without thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch, stretch forth thy hands, and another will get thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This speak he, this speak he is signifying by what death should glorify God. And when he had spoken thus, this he said unto him, Follow me. To enthrone is to sit in a place associated with position of authority or influence. It is to sit ceremonial, ceremonially on a throne. Now the question I want to ask is, who have you been thrown over your life? Whose will? Jesus Christ said in John chapter 14 verse 15, He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Everybody claims to love God. God, I love you. Just as Peter said, Jesus Christ asked him, Peter, do you really love me? And for three good times, Peter answered, God, you know I love you. You know what things. You know that I love you. Now, if you love me, you should do my will. What is the will of God? That, number one, you believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, that He was sent into this world. 
repent and follow him and not just that too you need to go out there and tell people who are on the way to the path of destruction that they need to change that they need to repent this is God's will Peter was actually a fisherman and after the Lord called him to make him fishers of men, Peter went back to the same place. He went back. Instead of fishing men, he went to fish fish. Jesus Christ went to him even though the, the, the toil was without good results. Jesus performed the same miracle. The very first one that caught the attention of Peter. He caught many fishes. He said, Lord, I'm a sinner. Depart from me. I'm not worthy to follow you. Jesus Christ said, follow me. A time came in the life of Peter that he boasted and said, Jesus, wherever you die, in fact, we are not going to let you die. We will go to prison because of you. We are going to storm anything because of you. But Jesus Christ looked at him and told him that Peter, before the cock will crow, you're going to deny me three good times. And Jesus had to ask him, no, from him again, that Peter, you boasted some days ago. You boasted that you will never deny me. You denied me three good times and you repented. Where is your repentance? If you love me, have you enthroned your will over my will? Or you enthroned my will over your will? If you love me, you should keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. This is a time to win souls. It's not a time to build houses everywhere. As a matter of fact, the world is going darker and darker each day. And we we'll believe us, we need to wake up. As a matter of fact, the fields are all white. The labor is huge. But the laborers are so few. This is not a time to catch fish. This is a time. It is a time to go about your master's business. Jesus Christ said, I must work the work of him who sent me while it is there because the night is coming where no man shall walk. No man shall be able to work when the night comes. Brethren, Peter, and thrown his will over God's will. But Jesus Christ told him that, listen, after he had commanded him to feed his lamb, feed his sheep, and lastly, feed his sheep, he told him, Peter, verily, verily, I say to you that when you were young, you get yourself, you dress yourself up and you go to wherever you want to go. But when you become old, you are going to stretch your hands and another person is going to get you, another person He's going to dress you up and will hold you to where you never desire to go. Old age is a blessing from God, but there are some things that come with old age a lot of times, which is the weakness of the human body. Old age is good, fine, but when you become old, when you grow up to 80, 90 years, even 60, there are some things that you're supposed to do that you won't be able to do. You won't be able to lift heavy things anymore. 
There are things, there are things that you won't be able to do anymore. Jesus Christ told Peter that, Peter, listen, when the time comes, when you become old, you won't be able to dress yourself up again and go to wherever you want to go. And let me tell you why I am preaching this message. Enthrone God's will over your life. There is something the Lord told me some days ago. It is a command. And he told me, if you don't do this, I will hold you accountable. As a matter of fact, he told me that, he showed me the implication. He said, this is the implication if you don't do this. But he also told me that I was going to face some level of challenges, but never to disobey. And he told me, I want you to preach this message to yourself. Today, I'm preaching it. This message is firstly for me before it is for you. I know a lot of people proclaim to follow Jesus Christ, but not many people actually obey Him. Uh, yes, He's a Savior. Yes, you were saved, but is He your Lord? If Jesus is your savior if he has saved you from destruction have you enthroned his will over your life this is where a lot of people were getting it wrong is he your personal lord lord means he is your owner he owns you and when you own a property you choose how the property should be used the property shouldn't tell you that this is how I want to be used. No. When you have a broom, you choose to sweep with it. You choose not to sweep with it. You choose what to sweep with it. You choose what not to sweep with it. We are the clay in the hands of God. But some of us with choosing not to be clay in the hands of God. Some of us have chosen to dictate how our lives should run. Remember I said this message is to me first. He said, preach this message to yourself. So that when you disobey me, this message will stand as a witness against you. God, give me and your children the grace to obey. You don't know why I appreciate this message. He said, proclaim to yourself that you should enthrone God's will over your life. And when you disobey me, this message will stand as a witness between you and I that you disobeyed me. I know obedience has never been sweet. Obedience has never been easy. And this is why we are where we are today. After God created everything, he told Adam, all these trees I have created, all these fruits I have created, all these herbs, it's everything. I hand over the fishes in the water to you, I hand over the beds of the air, the animals or the cattle or the elephants, everything. I give everything to you. But there are two trees in the garden, in the middle of the garden. There is a tree of life which you were very much free to eat. But again, there is another tree, which is a tree 
of the knowledge of good and evil. And that's one. You must not eat it. It is mine. Leave it for me. Don't eat it. Because the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. You will die. Let me tell you, obedience is not easy. Obedience to God is not easy. Please pray for men of God. Pray for pastors. Pray for your men of God. Obedience has never been easy. God gave us independent will. Why? Because He handed over the whole planet to us, the whole earth to lead it and we need to make decisions. Even if God is coming from heaven to do something, He needs the cooperation of mankind before He can act. Before He could save mankind, He needed a body. Just imagine the God of the whole world needing a body. And when Jesus Christ came, let me tell you, I was preaching on the pulpit one day and it was like a revelation, a word of knowledge that came into my mind once. And I said, Jesus was always calling himself a special title. He gave himself a special title, the Son of Man. Why? Because he wanted to identify himself as a man, not as God. He knew he is God. He said, I am the Father, we are one. He is in me and I am in him. But for him to be able to operate freely, he needed to bring himself down, humble himself, put on human flesh, pass through the normal process, of being born into this world even though there was no it wasn't through the relationship between a man and a woman he passed through the normal process of gestation and he was born and he was saying the son of man the son of man the son of man calling himself the son of man because if you were not a man it becomes illegal to carry out oppression on earth. This is why demons need your body. This is why God says you are his temple. God, as big as God, he needs your body. And we can choose to give him our bodies. And we can choose to take our bodies from him. We have the human will, and the human will is independent. We can make decisions. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Whatsoever thing you bind on earth is bound in heaven. That means if you agree and you say, No, as humans who have been given authority, dominion, Dominion. You can't have dominion without a domain. The earth is our domain. He gave us dominion. To dictate what should happen. So if we say we have agreed that this should be bound on earth. Jesus Christ said it will be bound in heaven. That, that means heaven will endorse it will endorse it if we say this one should be loosed on earth well heaven will equally endorse it and it will be loosed in heaven it is not that for instance if uh, uh, a, a, a child is bound by sickness that does not mean that the child is in heaven and is bound by sickness. And as you're losing the one on earth, the one in heaven is being loose. No, that is not it. It means that if you agree 
as touching anything on earth. So long as you have, you are a man, you have the dominion. You have the authority. It will be agreed upon. It will be accepted in heaven. How many of us have given our wills to God? Look at the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. You are invoking the will of God to come. When the kingdom of God comes, his will must supersede every other will. A hymn writer says, My will be lost in thine. Let my will get lost in yours. I remember 2011 when I was posted to St. Andrew's Cathedral. Worry. The Lord gave me four commands. And I broke one. And I almost lost my ministry. I broke one. And that one was stay alone in the house. He told me. You must live alone. But I just had a petition the previous year. And that same year, I started using prosthesis, artificial leg. I can walk today, I can jump, I can dance and do things, not because I'm not an amputee, but because I use artificial leg. It was even a local one. I just started using it. And he said, where you are going, you must live alone in the house. It wasn't easy for me. A time came, I allowed some persons into my home who lived with some, lived with me for some months. I lived to regret it. You can't have pity more than God. If God says, don't do it, don't ever do it. I almost lost my ministry. I would have ended up dead. If God gives you a command, do it. Do you know, as I'm preaching to you right now, this message, I am my first audience. Because he told me, you proclaim this word to yourself on camera. So that if you disobey me, this video will become a witness between you and I. It is what he told me this morning. I pray that God will give me the grace to obey and do everything that he has commanded me to do. Obedience is not, it's not easy. If he is your savior, he should also become your Lord. A lot of people have Jesus as their savior. But Jesus is not their Lord. Yes, he shed his blood for you. He died in your place. He delivered you from death. But have you enthroned him? Have you enthroned his will over your life? This is a question. In the Old Testament, animals used to save people from death. If you commit sin, uh, there were different categories of sins. Some 
um, have the repercussion of instant death. Some you could go with animals and then get go to the priest. You lay your hands and transfer your sins, especially. Um, for instance, what we call a scapegoat today. Transfer your sins upon the animal. The animal is slaughtered. The animal dies in your place. So instead of you dying, the animal dies in your place. Exactly what Jesus Christ did. And when John saw Jesus Christ, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the whole world. That was what animals were doing. But the difference is that animals were never our Lord. The animals, even though they die in our place, they are less, the lowest beings. But God, God himself came in the name of a man in the body of man and died that we should not just be saved but that we should henceforth live for him that in life or in death in whatsoever situation we should follow him that is why he told Peter after he had told him that the time is coming when when you become old, you will stretch forth your hand and another person is going to get you. He told Peter, follow me. He can't be your Lord without you following. Brother, sister, Hosanna, he cannot be your Lord without you following. You must follow. Follow, follow. I will follow Jesus. Are you following him? A lot of us profess our love for him, but we are not following. Are you following him? Let's read Deuteronomy 30 verse 15 and then 19 and 20. See, this is God talking. I have said before thee this day, life and good and death and evil can you please hand over your will to God can you please from the very moment man was created the will the power to make choices became the problem of mankind can you please you listening to me and I that is listening to myself can we all please hand over our wills to God can you can you how possible is it can you hand over that will that power to make choices can you give it back to God because even repentance is a change of mind. You are going towards this way, for instance, and you have a change of mind. To go towards this way, that is repentance. You are on your way, on the broad way, a way that leads to destruction. And then you hear the call of the Savior saying, Come towards this side. This is a narrow path. Follow this path. It leads to life. You turning and dropping your loads of sins because they won't contain the narrow path. That is what we call repentance. Can you, can I today, all of us, change our mind, have a change of heart? And drop our will before the throne of God and enthrone God's will over our lives. Hosanna, can you just do this? God give us the grace.
Look at what he told Peter. Now let me try and interpret it according to my own understanding. When thou was young, thou gathers thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. You go to wherever you want. Now, if you can follow me and be mature in the knowledge of the Lord, the Holy Spirit is going to come inside of you and live in you. The Holy Spirit is going to take charge of your life and you will become old in the ways of the Lord and become mature, not babes anymore who feed on milk but adults and then the Holy Spirit you will no longer have your own will the Holy Spirit will guide you will dress you the way he wants he will guide you and take you to where you wouldn't have gone to ordinarily if not for your submission to him Peter do you love me if you love me submit and grow in the grace and in the knowledge of God so that you can be moved to wherever the Holy Spirit wants you to go God told the children of Israel that behold today I said before thee life and good death and evil verse 19 i call heaven and earth to record this day against you that i have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore my advice for you therefore choose life that both thou and I see it may live. Verse 20. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God. And, thou, and that thou mayest obey his voice. And that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life. And the length of thy days. That thou mayest dwell in the land. Which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. To Abraham. To Isaac. And to Jacob to give them is obedience easy it is not easy but it leads to life are you on any path that leads to destruction the Lord is calling you back and thrown my will over your life lean not on your own understanding acknowledge me in everything you do acknowledge me God knows more than we do let's not judge God's actions based on our limited knowledge and understanding I know what God told me to do is difficult but he told me it's a must there's no negotiation you must do it I know it is serious he told me that there will be obstacles that will discourage me but he said don't give up maybe some years to come I may give I mean be plain and talk about what he asked me to do he said there is good at the end of it but i should forget about the bitterness and do it and i must obey this video may it is my prayer that this video will testify to god's goodness upon my life tomorrow and let it not witness in case me tomorrow and when that tomorrow comes I will I will by God's grace make reference to this video 
that the power of God saw me through and I was able to, able to obey and overcome all the circumstances. God will never allow any temptation that is beyond us to come to us. But listen, every temptation comes with its own package of grace to overcome. Now listen, Philippians chapter 2 verses 12 and 13. Let's read together. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Look at verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. God does the work of obedience in us because our canon nature can't actually obey God. It cannot submit to God. The canon nature can never submit to God. I remember uh, when I rededicated my life to Jesus Christ, year 2000, it was a very trying moment for me. I even did a video which I posted on my channel, Hosanna E.E. David. And in that video, I was talking about how I overcame backsliding in my weakest moments. I know, me, I know that nobody can use his own strength to obey God. I know it. I, I know. It is impossible. You can't use your own mathematical formulas to calculate the ways of God and say, okay, I'm going to obey Him and do everything by my own strength. No. But if you rely on God's grace and cast all your weakness upon Him, He will see you through, like I used to pray. In those days, year 2000, I would kneel down and start crying. And I would say, God, you know that I love you. You know, but I don't know how I'm going to overcome all these temptations. I don't know, but help me. And he helped me. He helped me. I've seen terrible moments in my life that I would see temptation and I'm about to fall in and God would save me. Maybe one day I will talk about if you lack strength, don't lack zeal. It is God that works in us. He works in us his own will and to do is good pleasure but we must submit to him now let me tell you how it works for those of you who have challenges accepting God's will for your life let me tell you how it works open your Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 34 we're going to read from verse 24 to 28 24 for I will take you from among the hidden and we gather you out of all countries and I will bring you into your own land. Remember these are people, children of Israel who have been scattered abroad because of disobedience. 25. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Why? Those people they need cleansing because they had gone out into the world. Some have abandoned the God of their forefathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac. And have started worshipping idols. Some of them became possessed with demons. And God knows very well that these people can't enter the land with, with, without Him intervening in their lives. Now look at the process. Those of you who have been called into this kingdom, submit to him. There are some of you who are possessed. Submit to him. He will 
forgive. He will enthrone His will over your life and make sure that nothing of any kind takes you away from Him. He will cleanse you. There is a process. Number one, He is going to gather you. And number two, sprinkle clean water upon you. This is deliverance. Sprinkle clean water upon you and wash away your filthiness. Cleanse you from all idols. And then give you a new heart. Verse 26. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. He will take away your heart of stone. That rebellious spirit. He takes it away and gives you the heart of flesh. So that you can have feelings. So that when he speaks to you. His word would pierce your heart. Not the word of God. It's like a hammer that breaketh rock into pieces. He breaks that stony heart. And then he washes every debris of that stony heart out of your life. And then puts in you the heart of flesh. He, he carries out a surgical oppression in you and replaces that heart of stone with the heart of flesh. And heart of flesh. Verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status. After taking away your heart of stone, after the cleansing, after the gathering, after the cleansing, after the deliverance, he gives you a heart of flesh. After giving you a heart of flesh, he puts his spirit in you. Now, this is what happened. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status. And ye shall keep my judgments. And do them. Uh, let me check if I can read maybe uh, another version. I don't use the NIV version, but for the purpose of clarity... Uh, understanding let me try to read it and I will put my spirit in you and move you and move you not just put my spirit in you but I will move you move I will move you I will move you this is a force of the Holy Spirit that's what the Holy Spirit does so even when you don't have strength he moves you to obey him he puts his spirit he knows that you can't do it on your own so what he does after the deliverance the cleansing the gathering together he puts his spirit in you remember you already have the heart of flesh puts his spirit in you and move you to obey him. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And you shall be my people and I will be your God. Look at the process. You just need to submit. Today, I have laid down my will before God as concerning what He told me to do. I will do the best I can to obey Him. I want to tell you, you have your own too. Definitely, there are things that the Lord wants you to do. Can you please do that? Can we stop? Can we just please stop calculating God's ways according to our own human understanding? 
Some of us, we know how to calculate God very well. We can trust our pilots, but we can trust the God that created the pilots. People choose to make decisions on their own. I remember yesterday I was talking to a man and I talked to the wife before I called the man. I told the woman, God said, leave where you are now. Go to your own home. Before the Easter celebration ends, God wants you to go home. So when it was time, when it was close, I called her up again and I said, where are you? She said, I have not moved. And I told her, God said, where you are now, they are going to poison you. You move. She said, oh, I'm owing, I don't have money. I said, if you need transport, I'm going to send you money. Go. Do you know she refused to move? Yesterday she was telling me, oh, I need to move. I'm going back. But it's late already. It's like, it's about two weeks after Easter. So I called the husband and he told me that the wife was even poisoned two weeks ago. How could you be told by God? Move from that place. You say, no, you don't want to move. Humans, I, I don't know. I was like that before. Probably that's why he said I should talk to myself on camera. Those of you who know how to disobey God, there are consequences. There are consequences. I've disobeyed God before, and now I will always say, God is always right. God is always correct. Because I know how I suffered the consequences of disobedience. I suffered, even after the call of God. I questioned some things in the world. I questioned some things about God. I thought I was right. I thought I was fighting for justice. You can't fight against the God of justice. You can't fight against the God who is justice himself because you need justice. No. May God help us. In what way are you disobeying God? In what way? This is me. God didn't call me to be a pastor to set up my own church. He called me to evangelize and teach and proclaim his words to his people. I remember the day he gave me the name of this ministry. It was on a Tuesday. He spoke to me. I had a trance immediately. And he spoke to me. Go to your room. I want to speak to you. So I left the church. A lady was there. We were two. I was in the control room. The media control room. He said, go, I want to speak to you. So I went to my room and he spoke to me. He said, this is a ministry. Give it to you. This is the name. Write it down. Operate like these two men of God. He showed me two men of God. He said, operate like these two men of God. This is the definition of your ministry. So he didn't call me to set up a church to become a general overseer and have branches everywhere. That is not my calling and I have to stick to my call. There are consequences of disobedience. Look at David, a man after God's own heart. I know some people say, Oh, David uh, took away Uriah's wife and slept with her, impregnated her, and even killed Uriah and without shame married her. But do you know what David suffered because of that disobedience? That act of disobedience. Do you know what he suffered? Even God told him through his servant, you, David, you have given a great occasion for the enemies to laugh. Enemies really mocked David. 
He told him that the, the sword, because you have killed Uriah, the sword will not depart from your home. Your house, the sword will not depart. David lost four of his children. He lost four. Just as he said, that man must pay for food. He lost four of his children. David lost four. His son, Absalom, chased him from the throne and he ran. He had a divided kingdom. There are consequences of disobedience. Don't disobey God. On the last day, the consequences are going to be eternal, everlasting. In fact, there is no word to quantify it. The description is that it is a lake of fire where their worm diet not. The worms, they don't die. There will be torture. There will be demons in the fire. There are special creatures that are created. Worms that we eat people, bow into people's bones and the people won't die. Punishment that was designed for Satan and his fallen angels. Don't go there. Don't disobey God. I know that there are numerous blessings in obeying God. I see these blessings. I see them when I look at my life. I see the glory of God. I see God's hand upon my life, especially my sustenance, how He keeps me how he has been able to provide for me and the children he has given to me that i take care of in different places i am happy and the people the mothers the fathers those who are old who are uh, under charity organizations uh, 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 different schemes different programs and over 70 children that are being taken care of we have never been stranded any time. Never have we been stranded. And as we talk now, there are people undergoing physical rehabilitation. I mean, people who are lame, have club foot, different kind of um, physical disabilities. We have over 20 cases. God has been providing. He has been provided his obedience when he told me to set up a charity organization my monthly salary was less than a hundred dollars a month as a pastor I obeyed but he has been providing can you please just obey God? I have never obeyed God any day and regretted it. He told me this one, if you disobey, these are the consequences. I know it is serious. And I ask for his grace. I will not disobey, but I ask for God's grace to help me. May the grace of the Lord be released upon your life. May you receive enough grace to obey God in the areas that He has called you to obey Him. Let us pray. Oh Lord our God, we thank you. Thank you for your goodness and your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. You said in your word, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14. 15. Lord, we love you. Help us to keep your commandments. Help us to follow you. Help us not to deceive ourselves in the name of grace. Help us never to lean on our own understanding, but to follow, to love you with all our strength, with all our hearts, with everything we have. Help us not to make choices according to our own understanding lord we submit our will before you help us lord those who find it difficult to submit their will 
to enthrone your will over their lives. Lord, help us all. In every area we have been stubborn, Lord, break that stony part of our heart and replace it with flesh. Lord, give your children the grace. I remember as many who are facing one challenge or the other. Lord, step into their situation. Those who are sick, may the Lord step into your situation. As I pray for you right now, receive your healing. Receive your healing. In the name of Jesus, may that problem be a thing of the past. Let it go away. Let that dryness go away. Let that joblessness go away. Let that demonic oppression, that demonic possession go away in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Even, Lord, I pray for as many who have supported this ministry. Lord, I ask that you continue to support them. Provide for them. Take away their shame. Take away hardship from their lives. Lord, those who have no job, provide for them. Those who are owing, Lord, clear their debts. Those who are being owed, Lord, we ask that their money should be refunded back to them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, protect your children in your way. Thy way, not mine, O oh God. However dark it be, Lord, shoes are Lord for us. Choose our way for us, Lord. Lord, choose our path for us. Thank you, Lord. Because we know you have answered and you have supplied enough grace. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please share this video with someone and also subscribe to this channel. The Narrow Way is Christ for all nations. And for those of you who are in the U.S., I just want to let you know that we now have U.S bank account those of you who find it difficult to give uh, we have a u.s bank account the details are on the screen do well to support the work of god thank you and god bless you see you next time bye bye